Welcome to this month's Death Side Chat. The topic of conversation for this month is advisor perspectives on building a new tech stack and transitioning to right capital. For those of you who've been along for the ride, uh, you have an idea of where these topics come from, how we get to them. It's through discussions in the Good Advisors Finish First community. This has been an ongoing topic of discussion between advisors. Obviously, tech stack is, is an important subject across the industry. It's something that a lot of advisors have opinions and thoughts on. And it led us to this topic in, in Right Capital, helping us find Lisa and Jonathan to join us and share their thoughts. What we don't want to do is create an echo chamber in our community. And so it's really important to get outside perspectives on the various topics that we are addressing. As far as a quick recap on what Good Advisors Finish First is, because I think we're going to have some new people in this meeting today. Good Advisors Finish First is the first and only, currently only community within the Good People Finish First network. It's a community of advisors who are committed to pursuing better client outcomes as a community. What makes it unique and different is that I'm not a coach. I'm not a consultant. I'm not an advisor doing this on the side. This is my day job. It's all I do. And the exclusive purpose of the Good Advisors Finish First community is to provide that service, that community, that networking between advisors. That's all that we do. And so the mentoring, the accountability, the connections, the networking, the idea sharing, all of those things are happening as efficiently as possible, direct advisor to advisor. And again, that's what led us to this particular topic where some advisors in the community were just bouncing some ideas. And, and I guess it started out specifically with someone who was using e-money directly and started to really investigate and put through, should I be considering right capital? You know, what things should I consider? And so that led to a number of different uh, topic or comments and, and thoughts from different advisors. And again, that's what brought us here. And we have uh, Lisa Grief. We have uh, Jonathan Keel with us. And we're going to have both of them uh, share some insight. What uh, they've done over the last couple of years in, in each instance is create a, a, tech scratch, a tech stack from scratch. And, and that included a transition to Right Capital. So we'll look forward to hearing from both of you. And I believe, Jonathan, you came from Money Guy Pro to Right Capital, correct? That's correct. And, and yes. Lisa, you went from e-money to right capital. Correct. All right. So we get a, a nice uh, round set of opinions. I, I like that. And and I guess I, I will say this as well. Final comment on the Good Advisors Finish First community is we're, we're not um, endorsing any of these different services. Uh, we're just simply sharing ideas, putting things out, uh, hoping to help add some value to the advisor community. And if you are interested in learning more, just uh, check out our website, goodadvisorsfinishfirst.com. Feel free to reach out to me directly. We have a business page on LinkedIn. All right, let's get into it. So um, what I'd like to do to start is, Lisa, we um, flipped a coin and you won the toss. So you get to Sweet. go first. Uh, <laughs> so before we get into the topic itself, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, talk about yourself, your experience in the industry, and then we'll jump into the topic. Yeah, awesome. Hey, everybody. Great to meet you. I'm Lisa. Excited to be here today and learn from everyone. Yeah, so I am I am not an advisor that's been in the industry for a long time. I, I'm a career changer. So I came from the athletic world. I was an athletic director at a boarding school, uh, worked in New York City for a while at a sports facility, and so spent my life, pretty much a good part of my life as a coach, um, an athletic administrator. I then had a significant health challenge and it took me out of the workforce for a year and it really got me thinking about just the future and everything I could do. And that brought me to financial planning because obviously that had a big impact on my life, um, not being able to work. So I started my career um, in a big company here in Des Moines. Uh, they they do focus on insurance, it's kind of sometimes you, you talk about where do you start um, and insurance was where I started and quickly realized that the holistic planning part was what was really important to me. Um, I then transitioned into an independent RAA here in Des Moines. And that's where I built my, um, with the team there, built a, a pretty much a brand new tech stack, transitioned a couple of things and, and started, um, started some new tech. 
and actually just transitioned again uh, to another RA here in uh, Des Moines as well, who has a different tech stack. So I, I've had experience building tech stack, tech stack from scratch, um, also career changer and just bringing that perspective, what, it, what it's like to um, get an outside perspective. And um, so I'm excited to be here and share share what I learned. Well, we're excited to hear and, and learn learn from you and, and, and what uh, you've picked up along the way. So uh, let's jump right in and, and, and talk about it. So um, in terms of the development process and in, in, in choosing the different options um, that, that make up your, your tech stack, can you walk us through it at, at a high level of, of what that looked like for you, Lisa? Yeah. So initially we were using e-money, like we talked about at the beginning. Um, we were doing our own billing. So I'll kind of just take up, we were doing billing from a spreadsheet. Um, we were in like at the startup phase in RA. So year one through five, I would say. So that's important to know based on where we're at. Um, and we decided to really focus on a couple of things. And I, I wrote an article about it in Advisorpedia. And the first thing was, was just talking about clarifying our why. And the question that we decided to start with was, what do you want the technology to do and why do we need it? So we started there as a team and kind of went through that question and really narrowed down to two things. We were focused on improving our client experience and our client engagement. And we had noticed within what we were using, our client engagement was low. Um, the feedback was that it was harder to use. Visually, it was not as appealing. We had our firm was focused more on younger clients, younger generation clients um, that were tech savvy. And so visually, we were looking something, you know, coming out of COVID, you're still doing some Zoom meetings. We had in-person meetings. We wanted something visual to share share screen or share up when they were in, in the office. Um, so those were the big things we started looking at initially to get us to the right direction. And, and so I, I love that. And that's what led us to you was your uh, <laughs> article in Advisorpedia, clarifying your why start with that what what are we trying to accomplish what's what's most important start there and then move forward it's a daunting task to build out a there are so many different options and, and ways to go so how did you go through so you knew you needed to do it you clarify that why it's in place how did you decide on um the the vetting process of of what you were going to look at and ultimately add to that tech stack yeah so we started with our why and then kind of narrowed down what we needed. So we needed to look at planning software. That was kind of the top of our list um, just to check everything out there. We also knew we needed billing. That was, we were looking for more efficiency, which was really important. It was a smaller team. So what could we do to take off some of the time on that back office side was really important. And we didn't have any um, portfolio reporting as well. And I did, I forgot to mention, we were using Salesforce as our CRM. And again, that was something that we just realized we weren't fully utilizing on our side. And it, was there a better way out there? So we really dove into what what CRM are you using now? If you don't mind um, sharing, we went to Advise On. So we ended up using Advise On as our CRM and portfolio reporting and billing, um, all in one solution, um, which. I absolutely love. So I, I I don't want to plug I don't want to plug anything, but it's been it's been a really good transition. Um, but yeah, so you gotta let <laughs> I sat in a lot of demos. I think for me, I'm like a visual person. I need to see what's happening with the tech. So I just reached out to a ton of different companies on the planning side, on the CRM side, on the portfolio reporting side, and sat through a lot of demos and just thought about like client experience wise. Would they enjoy this? Would they find it easier to use on the um, firm side? Is this something we actually would use? Like I found we weren't in Salesforce a lot. Um, you're paying a you know decent amount of money for that CRM. Um, how could we sort of make it more efficient? And that's where we ended up with Advise On. But on the planning side, we were looking for that client engagement. Um, and then for us, is it something we would use and build out? So that's where we started um, there and narrowed it down to a couple. And, and so you're out there doing demos, calling around, looking at, at all these uh, different options. 
Uh, what what was it like as far as getting buy in from everybody to move forward with you know making the transition to advise on right capital when it came time to actually you know pull the trigger and, and do it? Did, you know, was it easy to get consensus? Was everybody on board with that? Was that something that you had to had to battle through at all? Yeah, I think uh, you know we're a smaller firm, so more nimble. Obviously, if you're in a bigger firm, it might not be as nimble. That was my initial, you know, where I started was not as nimble. It would take years to change, um, to be honest. So we were in a more nimble environment, which I think is critical. Um, so it was one of those where I was I was the initial vetter of the technology. And then I narrowed it down to a smaller chunk of what we would potentially like and then brought it to the founder um, of the firm. And then we had another advisor as well. So. I brought them kind of that, I I don't want, narrow down the list to make it smaller for them and not overwhelming. And then between that, it became really easy to choose and really, it was just, it, it was apparent um, what we needed. I think, you know, the other thing I wrote about in the article was like, think about the future of the firm. So where you are now is important, but then what's the future of the firm? Where is the industry going? And what is that going to look like for you and your team? And that helped us pick um, our final options. So, in it, it is a it's it's a daunting process to you know, search through, narrow that list, you know, find uh, where where you're going. It, it also can be a, a challenge in terms of the actual implementation when when you're moving over. So, what what would you um, what are some watchouts or what are some things that you learn as far as the actual transition process to make sure that you're capturing data because not just planning, but CRM, that, that's going to be a big, you, there's obviously a lot of information that you want to make sure that you are able to square once you make the the, the move over to the new system. Um, so what what would be the, the biggest watch outs for advisors that might be in this vetting process or maybe all the way up to uh, getting ready to implement? Yeah, I think it's asking the question to the tech, you know, if you're thinking about switching, are you able to help me move the data? Do I need to move the data? How long is it going to take? Um, you know, specifically with Right Capital, they don't move the data. I think it's an extra extra cost. So we had that conversation, and, and the recommendation was, you know, with your clients. And again, we're in that smaller one to five year firm, so you know, client base. We have a certain amount. You might be in a larger firm. So we we decided as a firm it would be best to just start the plans from scratch. They have a nice onboarding, yeah. um, and then I had everything in eMoney and I brought over some of those things to prepare so they didn't have to fill out everything. Um, and then in our initial meetings when we were with them together, we were just filling in kind of the gaps that we were missing to make sure we had it. Now that would if you're in a, a bigger firm, larger amount of clients, you probably would need a team of people to help enter all the data. And make sure you plan ahead for the transition. That would be really important. Um, with the CRM and Vison, we um, a lot of that data flows in from the feeds from your custodian. So you get some of that data already coming in, which is really helpful. And then I just made sure I had everything from our previous CRM, the important information I needed to add in. So there is that data entry that you have to really think about and how you're going to do it and what the tech offers or the or the um if they offer support, it might be an additional cost as well. So that's something to think through. And then the timing, how long is it going to take to get the data and migrate it over to a new um, a new, tech tech, new tech stack? So going back specifically to the, the planning software, uh, you mentioned going back to the why, right? It's about the client experience and, and you want to have the clients engaged. What are the, is that, what are the, I guess, the most prominent things that, uh, you saw in right capital that maybe you didn't see any money. Was it just that, or were, were there some other things that you saw? And, and actually we want to be as objective. Are there some things in right capital that are missing that you may have had in any money that you'd like for them to add? This could be our um, ask of, of right capital. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, a couple of things, I'll start with e-money. So we really like the decision center um, as an advisor side of being able to put in different things that can happen to clients and see what that looks like. At the end of the day, though, we found on the client side that wasn't as important to them what they were seeing. And so in Right Capital, we did we had a lot of cash flow. So we were doing a lot of budgeting with clients, a lot of cash flow. You know, can we buy a house? Um, we were in that kind of stage, buy a house, family, 
college savings. So we found visually appealing, right capital was more visual appealing um, in the budgeting part. They also had a one page snapshot. And I know e-money was kind of moving to that. So that was a really big thing where we could just put on one page, you know, what their asset allocation was, um, plan, we could add notes. So it was a really easy way for them to look at the plan um, right there and not see a big stack of, you know, email them a big stack of papers, which was really important. I think the challenge in all of these softwares, so the connections uh, where you're connecting bank accounts, 401ks, they break. And it's pretty frustrating. I know we have clients that have, um, you know, use credit unions or use smaller banks and sometimes they're not able to connect any money or I capital. So we had those challenges constantly. Um, and, and, you know, I don't personally have a solution for that. That's what it I was, was going to ask is if you have it was, any advice. It was definitely somebody. frustrating. Um, and it still is frustrating uh, right now with that. Um, but yeah, we found once we switched to right capital, the budgeting part, our clients were more engaged. We had a number of clients, you know, not everyone's going to use the budgeting tool. Um, we just know that we definitely had more people using it, um, keeping track of their monthly expenses. And, you know, we had a budget set for them and things like that. And then the one page snapshot was a big thing for us. And I know um, they just came out with a couple of different visuals of flows of cash flow, like over time. And that was, that's, that's really cool when people are liking that as well. Um, so some of it's visual appeal. Some of it is just on the advisor side is, you know, the engagement, the use, and we, we were using it more clients were using it more. So we found that would be a win-win. Um, I will say we did add asset map. That was one thing we decided to add as well. Cause we found the visual picture, um, kind of the snapshot clients really like that. So we decided to start using the asset map where you could show insurance, um, assets, liabilities, loans, all of that on one page. And, and we always started our meetings with that and it helped to find gaps. It helped to build conversations. So we paired those two together and it was a really good mix. What uh, final question, then we'll uh, move over to Jonathan um, again, uh, objectively speaking, and maybe trying to uh, help push the needle at right capital. What do you miss at, at eMoney? What, what are they maybe missing at right capital that could, um, you know, help them, uh, you know, continue to, to grow or compete in, in that space? Are there, are there any big things that, that you miss from the, the previous software? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, the decision center has some unique qualities to it where you can really dig in deeper. Um, I feel like then right capital, if you really want to nerd out as the, on the advisor side and like geek yeah. out about stuff, cash flow, get really deep and some scenarios. A lot so of I advisors think... want to do that. Then going back to the, why <laughs> the client experience, how many clients want to want to do that? Right. So that was, that's where our, why had shifted. So we had shifted more to the client perspective. So, but I think that's again, if the advisor, if that's really important to them, then that may reason to be at somewhere somewhere else. Um, for us, that's what kind of it it became not as important as client experience, client engagement. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I use e money too. I was in the FPA externship, and we got really deep into e money as well. And I liked. I think it's a very good software. I think it's it's good. It just became what's right for your firm. And I think that's the biggest question that advisors need to ask. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, the format for this month is a little bit different than what we've been doing. We, Jonathan, Lisa, and I talked in the beginning. We're going to keep the live stream running on LinkedIn. So if you're in the meeting directly and you have questions, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. And if you're watching this on LinkedIn, please comment on the uh, feed there. And hopefully somebody can uh, get us over to, um, hey, it looks like we're already going to start putting a, a batting order in place, Jonathan, before we get to you. So if you have questions, please feel free to ask those on, on LinkedIn. Hopefully somebody will uh, carry those over. And so uh, Jonathan, we want you to chime in and then we'll go to the q and It looks like Ben's already ready to ask a question. And um, and then Lisa, if you can stick around, we'll, we'll kind of bounce between uh, the two of you. But Jonathan, if you can provide same thing, I asked Lisa, if you can provide a little background on yourself, then uh, we'll jump into the uh, topic at hand. Uh, yeah, thanks, John. Um, so kind of like Lisa, I'm also a career changer. Um, 
I came from the watch industry. So I spent 14 years working for Rolex. Um, and uh, after, after those 14 years, I uh, was kind of in my mid thirties looking at, you know, is this what I want to do for the next, uh, you know, 30 years and um, decided that it was, it was a good time to make a switch. And so um, I started out in the financial uh, services industry uh, doing tax preparation and very quickly realized that that was not, that was not for me. Um, I, I like taxes, but I don't like preparing people's taxes. And um, so I transitioned then into financial advising. I worked for, um, about three years for a local fee-only RIA. Um, that's where I got my um, experience work with Money Guide Pro. And then um, decided uh, um, in 2021 to transition uh, to, my, um, to my own uh, solo RIA. And the reason for that was the firm that I was working for was, was a good firm. Um, they were uh, they they struck me primarily as a investment management first firm, and I was uh, I got the most energy and enjoyment out of working with financial planning clients um, in conjunction with investment management. So um, that was that was the main drive uh, for me to to go out and start my own RAA, which then provided this great opportunity to uh, figure out what tech I was going to use. So. I imagine that's probably your next question. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wanted to, you know, before I even ask, I, I saw you nodding uh, and we've talked a little bit ahead of time, but I saw you nodding during, uh, you know, Lisa's portion. Um, I, I guess, you know, are there some things that, that she said, I guess, what were the, what are the primary things that she said that would, um, you know, be similar to what you've done and maybe any, any differences as far as, and we'll start there, the, 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 the daunting task, right. The fun aspect of, of trying to, um, you know, search through and find these options. Uh, let's start there and, and hear your thoughts, Jonathan. Yeah. I had to laugh a little bit when I was listening to Lisa, because I don't know that I defined my process as much as she did with the, with the article and all, but the approach was certainly, and then also some of the, what we were looking for and finding um, are, were very similar. And so the first part of that was just as I transitioned over, um, it, it was a daunting task, you know, to, to figure out what tech I was using. And so I will say I took the easy route um, in, in some ways by uh, uh, registering my firm with uh, through XYP or XY Planning Network, XYPN. And um, they have a very, very healthy, robust uh, kind of tech stack um, on their platform that they provide discounts for. Um, and, and just going on there and reading um, in their uh, in their chat rooms and and their, and forums about the different tech, um, I I kind of very closely aligned myself with what they what they were providing. Um, one because I I I liked uh, I liked the network, I liked their approach. Um, I was grateful that they vetted a lot of these for me. And two, if they were providing discounts as a solo RIA, it, it provided quite a a benefit to go with with what they're providing. Um, so. Another nice thing about that was that that what they what they current what they had back then um, two and a half years ago or two years ago was very closely aligned also with what I was using um, at my previous firm, and uh, the one exception to that would be uh, we were using Money Guide Pro and I decided to go with Right Capital, and and so I spent a lot of time analyzing that just in in regard to the fact that I was really looking for. Um, like Lisa mentioned, a client engage more client engagement. So the experience that I had with Money Guide Pro was that it was really kind of an advisor tool, and we would kind of trot it out during the client meetings, and it would be this great, you know, impressive plan that we would show clients. And if they wanted any more information, we'd print out a sixty-page uh, report for them and, and and send them on their way. And and I really that re really didn't sit well with me, and I wanted um, I wanted something that was was a little bit more client facing or client first. And um, because I wanted the financial planning um, to be the financial planning software to be a tool at, that I was using and not the actual financial planning. And so um, in looking at Right Capital, the, the two things that really stood out to me um, were the, uh, the kind of the cohesiveness of the platform. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but also uh, like, like Lisa mentioned, some of the visuals. And, um, and and that's what uh, that's what kind of uh, uh, pointed me more towards Right Capital than Money Guide Pro. Um, 
I feel like it has, that decision has been validated a number of different times with clients. Um, most recently, uh, just this past month, I talked to the client that um, I'm transitioning to a different custodian that we've worked with, you know, on the financial planning side. Now he's moving, you know, his, his assets over. And so we're moving to a different custodian for him. And um, his only question really was not about the dynamics of moving the assets. He just wanted to know, do I still have my client portal with right capital? And so that was like the most important thing for him was to have that. And so that that's always a, a great validation when, when a client is that uh, invested in, in the software that you're using. So. Yeah, I, I love that. It goes back to, you know, Lisa talking about the, the why and, and, you know, focusing on the client. It, it's not to say that the robust plan, all these things aren't valuable. It's just a matter of what's going to actually help the client be engaged and, and move the needle. So I, I love that. That's really cool to hear. Um, you know, as far as the um, you know, transition, I guess you talked a little bit about the the differences between uh, Money Guy Pro and in Right Capital. And I sorry if I missed this. Did you um, transition data from, or or was it, or did you start from uh, scratch? How, how did that look for you, Jonathan? Yeah, that's a good question. No, I did not transition data. I um, I pretty much started from scratch. I took five clients with me, um, and those I just manually um, set up on, on Right Capital. And then every additional client that I've taken on uh, hasn't been any any data, no data needs has needed to be merged. So yeah, pretty much started from scratch. And you know what what would be I guess um, are there things that that you miss that you know um, at Money Guy Pro are there are things that you would like to see Right Capital add that um, you, you miss or maybe even the clients miss, you know, speaking of that, that client who, who came to you and, and asked about, you know, do I still have my portal? Yeah. So I, I would kind of concur. Um, and I haven't, I'm not familiar with the money as much because I haven't used it, but I would kind of concur with Lisa, like the parts that I miss are more of the, Hey, this is, this is kind of a fun geeky thing for advisors to play with. Like, so money guy pro has, a, has their play zone, which uh, you can stack yeah. four different plans. I think it's four um, in a row and you could kind of play around with lots of different data points and, and see how that affects the numbers. And like for an advisor, that was really fun. I enjoyed that. Um, I only ever had one client. That's what I was going to ask. Did, I, did you I have clients that actually doing that? Because <laughs> they just weren't interested in it. Um, they're much more interested in, um, so going back to Right Capital, when I talk about the cohesiveness of the platform, the you have the the account aggregation. You've got the uh, like a secure document vault. You've got the mobile app, um, and it's all a cohesive uh, interface. So the client is it looks the same whether I'm presenting a financial plan with them or they're logging on to their client portal to see, you know, their net worth statement or to do some work with the budgeting. Um, it's very familiar to them, and so it's not like this you know foreign thing when they come into a financial planning meeting and we pull up their uh, right capital, it, it's very familiar with them. I think when I was working with Money Guide Pro, a lot of this stuff was add-ons. So we could add on account aggregation, but I think we were using a, we were using a third-party aggregator. It looked different. Um, our client mobile app looked different. The, it was just, it was a little bit, I felt like disjointed. And, and one of the things I really like about Right Capital is that, um, is that cohesiveness? Um, there's a there's a there's a nice familiarity there with for clients as they as they work with me. Um, it's it's not like I'm bringing up something brand new and and all of a sudden you see the eyes glaze over. Um, they're familiar with the platform and they're and they're comfortable using it, which which is what one thing I like. And then I I did want to just um, and maybe if I can share my screen if you're okay with that. Um, I did want to share just some of the visuals that Lisa mentioned because that was one of the biggest things that. That I really feel like one of the, right capital is 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 so proactive in in updating some of these things and providing these visuals. Um, it's, it's at times it's even hard to, to keep up with it. So um, some of these visuals, let me if I can just share my screen here. Um, so so she talked about the. Can you see that, John? Yep, I, I see it. Yep. So she talked she talked about the the snapshot. The snapshot's really nice in that it's it is. Kind of like a click and drag, you know, type thing. You can adjust. You can add text boxes here. So I put for my clients. I created a template 
the top one is, is kind of their financial values, a financial value statement or a financial statement of purpose. Um, you can put the balance sheet there, or you, uh, the probability of success for their plan, net worth, different goals that they have, um, asset allocation, um, you know, there's a number of different things that you can put on here uh, to, to kind of customize it, how you want it to look for your firm. And so that's one of the, the I think that's a tremendous uh, thing that, that uh, the clients can on like kind of a one page, you know, summary, you get a quick snapshot of their, um, their finances. And then um, some of the other things that are really neat are the blueprints. So they've rolled out blueprints, uh, net worth blueprints. So you can see dividing up the different assets, um, not only by, uh, by owner, so joint or individual ownership, but then also color coded by what type of investments they are, bank, you know, uh, stock or investments, credit card loans, uh, so liabilities and, and insurance. Um, also doing the same thing with income saving and expenses. Really neat uh, just visuals that clients can quickly get a, 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 vi a lot of clients are more visual than, than we like to like to think. And so these are way, these are alternative ways to communicate with them, um, their financial position. And then the cash flow chart that they most recently pulled out that Lisa was, or rolled out that Lisa was talking about um, is, is kind of like one of these Sankey um, cash flow charts. That's just a really kind of another just neat visual way of breaking down, you know, where's the money coming from, where's it going to, and, and what's our, what's our excess uh, cash flow. Um, so just th those things, um, I would say, are, are things that, again, it's, it's not, it's not, you know, the geeky, like, hey, we can do all these data inputs, but it's a, it's just a very quick, nice way for a client to, or to communicate to a client um, a sp specific point. Um, and, and also once you've got the account aggregation, there are, you know, like any other aggregation um, uh, platforms, there are issues with, with connections being broken. But once you have those connections in place, once you've got the, 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 um, the initial data inputs in place, these, these, all these charts are, are updated live. And so, you know, account balances go up or down, the, the accounts automatically update and, and you don't have to be in there. Uh, changing anything for an upcoming client meeting. So the, just uh, the visuals are just a great aspect, I, I feel like, for Right Capital. Good, good stuff. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. I appreciate it. Uh, we're starting to get some questions flowing in here. And so the, the process for that, again, at the bottom of the screen, if you can use the Q&A tab to ask questions. If you're uh, brave enough and want to come up and, and actually talk uh, in front of the group, we'd love for you to do so. Please raise your hand and we can add some people in. Uh, once again, the typical format for the these meetings that we're, we're running in the Good Advisors Finish First community is that we go into a roundtable where we have everybody uh, turn their cameras on and, and we share in a roundtable. We have... Um, probably a, a few too many uh, attendees today to to facilitate that. But I, we do want people to come up and, and ask the questions directly. So raise your hand. And as long as, and I think we, it's small enough as far as the number of people who'd be willing to do that, that um, we'd love to get uh, some additional participants asking questions and also sharing your thoughts because part of the value of this. So thank you both. Uh, really, really appreciate you, you joining us, uh, Lisa and Jonathan and, and sharing so much uh, blessing and curse of this in the way that we're doing things is we want to, it's all about hear from your peers. We want to hear from the advisors. And so we get a direct you know, experience from boots on the ground, right? Capital is, is letting us use their zoom room, but they're, that's it. Um, you know, it's your uh, actual perception. Um, the challenge there is if we get questions that might be more specific and we got to come back to later. So first off, and I don't know if either of you know the answer, if we could have somebody jump in in, in case or get back, um, as far as data transfer, um, do either of you know what, the process is at Right Capital, how that works. Um, do they offer that from eMoney, Money Guide Pro? Either of you know? If somebody does, feel free to I chat. Don't. If you, I'm sorry. You <laughs> I'm trying to remember my conversation. It was either they offered it, but for our firm, it didn't make sense financially, um, or they didn't offer it. And now I'm, I'm blanking on which one it is. Um, 
but it, it, it was something we had to do manually. Okay. Um, and we'll see. And again, I want to, you know, if people are willing to chime in either in the chat or, or jump into the, the meeting here, please raise your hand and do so. So Ben actually raised his hand a while ago. So I'm going to, uh, hopefully he's still around ready to ask his question. Um, Ben, are you there? Can you hear us? Asked to unmute. Let's see. We'll find out. If not, we can go to some other ones. Oh, he said he's good. All right. So thank you so much for um, at least being willing to do that, Ben. So if anyone else is, is uh, willing to do that, please let us know. Um, another question that, that came in uh, here uh, off of uh, LinkedIn was, um, and, and I, this is again where it might be different, your answers, the, the two of you, is there's a number of people in our community and broader that are with broker dealers that may have some restrictions. Do either of you run into any issues from a compliance perspective as far as what clients can enter and how they can engage in right capital? Or is that going to be better answered by somebody with a broker dealer? If you have thoughts, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Like any challenges in getting the clients to engage? I mean, I can start, I started in a broker dealer. Um, so I think, and I, I had mentioned this kind of in my initial chat, like it, it, I wasn't able to switch. They did, they were doing some trials of different things. So we actually used Money Guide Pro and then they were trialing e-money. Um, so we had restrictions on what we could use, what we couldn't use. It's, I've definitely found it more flexible in the RIA space, but I'm, I'm thinking if you're in a broker dealer, I, I did go and ask because I had actually looked at Right Capital and I said, you know, I think this might be best for clients. I did ask. They told me no. Um, but it was for me, it was worth asking. As, yeah. Um, as the chief compliance officer, uh, no, I haven't run any problems. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will say, I will say this. I I, I don't think um, from an RIA space, I haven't found too many issues of people entering data being a compliance issue. I, as long as they're clients and they've signed client engagement agreements, mm -hmm. I would be, I guess I would have to check into right. Capital has, has a lead generator um, component to it where they have a, they have a link where people can sign up um, for a limited side of the platform and enter information. I would be a little bit more hesitant to offer that um, just because I don't want to fall into some sort of custody rule. Um, if a client, enters information on the, in the software. So I don't know if that answers the question or not, but. Yeah, that, well, that's a good point. Cause we did not add that either. It was controlled kind of through us of who was entering and who could do that. Uh, and again, if, if anyone else is willing to, to jump in and, and chime in, please do so. So we are getting some questions. If you can, uh, again, use the, the Q and A button at the bottom. Uh, otherwise, it's fine. I think some people are just asking in the chat. But if you're willing to raise your hand and ask directly, I want to make sure that I frame your questions correctly. So um, please feel free to do so. Um, so let's go to this one. Um, proposed ideas. Are you able to see the chat, Lisa and Jonathan? I think or not. Okay. I'm just able uh, to. Yeah, I can pop it up. All right. I just want to make sure we, we get this correctly. So um, do you have, do you find it difficult to, um, you know, propose ideas, uh, to specific things, um, you know, specific products, services, annuities, specific investments, uh, compared to either, um, e-money or money guide pro. Or are using asset map or using something else for that? I mean, right off the bat, I would say that I do, do not, I've not done any, um, work with reverse mortgages uh, for my uh, clientele, um, either on Money Guide Pro or Right Capital, but I know that it is available. So Right Capital has what I think they call data cards that you could add a reverse mortgage, you know, attach it to a property and specify different, different things like interest rate and all. Um, the same thing with annuities. So I have done some work with annuities. I, I have not found that to be more difficult than Money Guide Pro. Um, that's my, I mean, that's my quick answer for that. How about e-money, Lisa? 
Yeah. So I, I don't do reverse mortgages either. And I'm, I'm trying to think if Reed is asking or the last part have found right capital, not as friendly. If, if Reed is in right capital, I just am curious, not as friendly. Um, so I think, you know, right capital. So when we had a situation, maybe we couldn't figure out, we would check in with right capital and try to find some kind of workaround, like how to model something the scenario that we needed. There were a couple of times we had to do that. Um, and then, yes, we did. So asset map for us was more of a visual than a plan. It was more of a visual conversation tool. And then the right capital was more the planning tool. Although we found asset map to be really nice in certain situations that helped highlight the gaps in the plan because it was visually showing, you know, they didn't have insurance in this area or they didn't have umbrella insurance. So they didn't have a retirement account specifically. Then we could model what that looked like in right capital if we decided to add those. So we kind of paired those two together in that way, conversation piece, visual piece, and then building out the plan in, in right capital. So next one, and, and Jonathan, I think you kind of hit this with what you shared, but I'd, I'd like to hear what is the uh, most commonly used feature for each of you in, in right capital. And I guess tying that into what are clients, um, you know, from the advisor perspective and then from the client perspective. I mean, part of it depends on the, uh, at what point you're, you know, at, in the client advisor relationship early on, um, the budgeting feature is the most, I, I go over that quite a bit. With clients, um, once we get more into like the kind of the maintenance um, portion of it, um, it's the snapshot. Um, just just being able to pull that up in the meeting and just kind of you know getting a quick idea of where we're at, where we, you know, that was great. Like last year when the market was was doing its its thing, and we could pull it up and be like, you know, yes, you're you know down this amount or whatever, but your your plan is still on track. Um, and and then diving more into the um, into the visuals into the visuals where where I feel like that's applicable. Some of the visuals I didn't pull out um, just because of it's hard to to show that on like a PDF. Um, but one of the ones I really like is the in the blueprint section is a timeline of, of of goals. And so that's always nice to kind of pull up and see you know, where are we, how many years are we at, away from this? Or, you know, what are we, what are we planning for next? Um, and then also, you know, at least once a year I pull up, they've got a great um, beneficiary um, um, overview of all the accounts to make sure that the beneficiaries on investment accounts are set up correctly. Those are kind of the, just the, the high points that I hit with, with right capital usually. It's funny. We have the same high points. <laughs> I don't need to go through it. I think, yeah, the budgeting is really important that initially um, the one page snapshot and then the vault was just really, mm. you know, I, I know there's a vault in e-money as well, but for some mm. reason people were using the vault more in right capital and it was an easy way to share secure documents and set up. Um, the other thing I really liked also as an advisor was you can set up tasks in right capital yes. and email those out for due dates. I think, you know, part of what we're doing is behavior, behavioral finance and getting people to move forward and take steps. So I found just with the visuals, with some of these small little things, it helped clients take those baby steps they needed to take to continue to improve on their plan. That That's come up in our discussions a number of times in this kind of goes back to advisors, here's your 500 page plan. And, you know, I'm going to put this in front of you. Clients get overwhelmed. It is, what's come up is just trying to address one thing at a time with the clients. Like, let's try to make this manageable bite size. And so uh, leveraging that function, I think can be very helpful to do that. Thank you uh, for sharing. Uh, so you, you both, you kind of mentioned, I think Lisa, you'd mentioned the um, potential issues with uh, networking, with uh, your drawing connections to banks and, and so forth. What about um, integration with CRM, other um, technology tools? What what does that experience look like um, specifically to CRM? But you know, if you're having data flow anywhere else, custodian, what have you, I, Jonathan, you mentioned that. What does that integration look like? Um, I guess maybe start with CRM. Are either of you doing doing that with Right Capital? 
I have okay. it integrated with Wealthbox. That's the CRM that I use. Um, and that's been, for me, it's been um, pretty seamless. Um, you can you can push clients in the right capital from, from Wealthbox. Um, Two way, the, it goes? Um, I've only ever done it from Wealthbox to right capital, but okay. it, it, it might. Um, and then the custodian CRM or the custodian, um, integrations have been, have been flawless as well. There's, there's been no issues there whatsoever. And the custodians I use are Schwab and, and Altruist. How about, how about you, Lisa? Yes. So we use advise on for CRM, but we advise on, I use also for our, the portfolios to push into right capital. <laughs> we also use Schwab as well. Um, I don't think it's, a, I'm trying to think if it's a two way into advise on. Um, I'd have to check, but that was something we looked at and, you know, made sure, you know, if you're using something, it's a big consideration, obviously, if it doesn't integrate. Um, so you have to kind of think through that and weigh the pros and cons. All right. So this kind of along the lines of what we were discussing overwhelming the client. So again, Jonathan, thank you for, for sharing your screens. Like, what are the, the primary reports that are a must as far as the deliverables to the client? Um, and then um, also, I think we talked a little bit, but if you can talk a little bit more about the, the vault feature as well, uh, either of you. I, mean, I can start with the vault. So we used the vault initially um, to gather documents. So we, I would set up folders in there, um, you know, for investments, insurance, estate planning, if you do that, um, just, and then you give access to the client and then they are able to upload documents and um, make it really seamless. So I think it's, it's very nice to have. Yeah, I think just the, um, so Right Capital has a nice uh, six step process where you can, the client can walk through and just add the information. And then when we get to the, the end of that, there, there are some, there's just some, the, some accounts that won't be able to be linked or, you know, we can't manually, it's not easy to manually add all the information or maybe we just need the statement. And, and so those, the, uh, the vault um, is just right there. It's accessible by both the client, the advisor for, the, they can go in there, they can very easily upload anything, anything digitally into the vault. And that's been a great way to just kind of minimize the, um, the number of times that a client will send personal information through email, quite, quite frankly, um, just right off the bat to say, hey, if you have any information to share, just drop it in the vault. Um, and then I usually go in there, uh, you know, before the, at, in the data gathering stage and just create some folders and organize stuff that, so that it's all, it's all there. Um, but uh, as far as the deliverables go, I'm sorry, what was the question? What's, what are the most, what are the most important, important ones? Reports. Yeah. Reports. Um, again, it depends on the client. You know, I just, I, I, they, they have a nice, like one page social security optimization to, uh, graph that that's really great for, for people who are, you know, entering that phase of life. Um, I usually stick with what I'm doing it. I stick with the, um, and, and I'll just, I'll say this too, being able to customize the reports is really great on right capital. You can go in and <clears throat> you can, they have it kind of set up the exact same way that the tabs are across, you know, the, the, the homepage. So there's going to be the retirement section. There's going to be insurance section. There's going to be, um, you know, investment, investment section. There's going to be all the different sections. And then underneath that, there's subcategories. So you can pick and choose, you know, you don't have to print the entire retirement section. If you don't want to, you can go in there and you can pit, print, you know, kind of one section from the retirement. So like social security, for instance, um, would would be would be one of those um and so that's a really great feature but i focus on the snapshots kind of the centerpiece you know if i do send a deliverable or a report snapshots kind of the the front page of that um <clears throat> that's followed with um some of the blueprint um ones that i should kind of showed on the screen um i have not included the the sankey just be or cash flow diagram just because that's so new at this point but um, I'm looking at introducing that to the clients in the next couple of months just to, to kind of get some, some feedback and, and see if, you know, that resonates or not. Um, but I do include 
in addition to the blueprints as far as the net worth breakdown and the cash cash uh, or the income invest um, savings and liabilities i include the um the beneficiaries uh report um and i did see a i think a question in the the chat that the beneficiaries do not feed in automatically unfortunately the, those you have, you do have to add yeah. Yeah, that would be a good addition, right? Capital would be nice. Well, that's that's what we want them to hear. Well, I guess if they're listening, yes. <laughs> if, you're listening, I mean, if you're listening, are are there any other manual things you have to do? Is it is beneficiaries a primary one? Is there anything else that you you need them to add to the the um, integration? Um, trying to think. No, the. So this the the initial data gathering section is I think provides the most information, um, the most of the manual information. But yeah, the beneficiaries is definitely one that um, when you when you're integrating your CR or your um, custodian that that does need to be added manually. Yeah, and I don't really have anything else to add on the reports. I think the one thing I would just highlight is it is flexible. It's adaptable to what you're doing. We had, you know, in spring, we were doing more and focus on more insurance, estate planning in the fall, more and tax. And then in the fall, mm -hmm. more beneficiary employee benefits. So you could just print out what you needed for the client. And then also if something new popped up, you could print out something. So we used the one page snapshot and then just specifically what the meeting was about. Right. We would add that on. Right, you can use it to kind of follow a service calendar mm -hmm. approach. All right, so last call here as we're winding down. If you have any additional questions, please once again use the Q and A feature, add a add a comment on here, or please raise your hand if you um, are willing to join us live. Uh, Reed, I'll call you out. I'd love to you know hear some additional thoughts on that because I think it it is valuable um to have um other oh here he is thanks reed reed are you uh asked to unmute let's see i unmute you. myself there he, there he is all right so i think that you know so you brought up uh sharing the vault with other professionals as well i think that's a very um valuable um you know, option right valuable to the clients and, and all parties concerned so do you want to expand on that at all or do you mind reed no, I don't mind. I used to use e-money. I was interested in hearing others how they've uh, transitioned to right capital. Um, I did find the vault and the specific folder, the tax folder, sharing with other tax preparers that I don't work with. Uh, once they got an email that said, yeah, share this information from the client, you got permission, then um, I'd send them a link and they could send over a copy of their tax return. It was very helpful. And I wish Right Capital, if you're listening, that would they're, be. They're listening. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Uh, that'd be something you definitely I'm interested in. Uh, I too use Asset Map, like Lisa does, and um, found it's limited on its. I mean, I get where Adam is coming from, but at the end of the day, um, specifics do matter, and um, it's kind of like a crime scene. You know, you can't just go in there and guess at a 5% rate of return. Um, so uh, I do find that transitioning from the asset map to uh, right capital is helpful. You can tell any story you want, 5%, 10%. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> unless, unless you have compliance, Jonathan, looking over your shoulder, uh, checking in. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think <laughs> we personally found it was nice paired with something that, after doing our research, so. Yeah, the, the uh, getting the information from a client in Asset Map wasn't as uh, juicy as getting it from Right Capital because the clients are kind of like just glossing over. But when right. you integrate things, uh, then it me it's meaningful, and that's what I found. I did Thank find you. a problem with uh, the reason for my question was that in e money it was a lot of work having to buy something and sell something and transfer something. Um, and right capital makes that a little easier, but getting the proposed plan in their current interface isn't quite what I had hoped it would be. Um, uh, I don't do reverse mortgages, but I do suggest them from time to time. It's, you know, it's, a, it's a meaningful thing for a lot of clients. And so 
but annuities or if I'm at a REIT or something, if I wanted to take something out and put something in, it's not as um, it's not as easy to get from the current to the proposed as I would like. So um, it's easy creating their current status, but all the additional ideas that you could come up with, they kind of tend to blend together. That's what I found. But I do like right capital. Thanks for uh, being willing to to chime in and, oh, and two cents. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks for appreciate time, it. Guys. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, again, as we wind up, any uh, additional questions, thoughts, uh, please use Q and A. Raise your hand. You can jump up. So again, I kind of you know hit this from a compliance perspective. This is something we may need to follow up on with specifically with broker dealer uh, advisors. I know of a couple of firms that straight up don't allow right capital uh, to begin with, but then there's even limitations. And so the question I got directly here was uh, compliance limitations around clients adding data or, you know, and entering things themselves. And, and I, you know, I think this is relevant both on the RIA side and, and the um, broker dealer side clients, you know, conceivably could enter, you know, wrong information and then you're using that data or, or what have you. So is that something that um, either of you have experienced, run into any concerns or issues with, you know, clients, um, you know, leveraging and, uh, and entering information, or if any, again, anyone else is willing to chime in I'd love to hear from others as well. So we made sure to get statements too, I guess, just for us, for compliance wise and on the back end, any kind of recommendations, we needed to see a statement as well. So um, that was important for us, you know, as part of our process. And Jonathan, anything? maybe I'm not understanding the question. What could you just ask it again? So um, there could be potential uh, conflicts of interest if, um, you know, clients are able to access and account, a aggregate and um, add, you know, information themselves. So engage, like if they're adding, you know, documents, statements to the vault, or the, they may, um, you know, things could be out of date or it could be um, incorrect information. And so there's, there are, you know, some concerns with, with firms about, you know, allowing mm -hmm. access, right. Allowing the, the clients to, to do that, because again, it could lead to conflicts of interest. It could lead to, um, again, the, the wrong information being utilized. I think Lisa, right. Using statement, you got a hard, you know, documentation on things. Um, any other thoughts on that, Jonathan? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess I see that. Um, if they're creating, if there's a, if they're creating an, an account aggregation link, um, and there's there's a disconnection, um, Right Capital will tell you when the last time it was updated, so you'll know if it's been outdated, um, or if it's not updated, um, and it goes from like, like a concerning yellow, I think, um, exclamation point to like a red one when it becomes concerning. So I mean, you know if if something's out out of date you know, you can't rely on the information that's being fed in. So that's one, that's one indicator. Um, but yeah, having the statements, I mean, statements, even if you have a statement that's, that's a couple months old, um, that could be problematic too, I guess. So um, I have found the biggest uh, problem, I think, in <clears throat> clients adding their own information, um, especially in regard to what their expense, monthly expenses are. Um, I met with a client just yesterday that they had told me that their monthly expenses were 4,000. And when we did the actual budgeting, it was 8,000 a month. So like, so you just have to be aware of, of that stuff that, you know, you have to do your due diligence to, to make sure that the information is correct. And, you it's know, part of the value of, and, of the human side, right? Like exactly, if, yeah, if they're exactly. just entering it so, themselves, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just like anything else, you just can't take, you know, just because there's a number there, you can't take it for granted. So. All right. We just hit the top. Um, Lisa, Jonathan, thank you both so much for your time and insight. Like always, these topics are evergreen. Uh, continue the conversation. So uh, for Good Advisors Finish First members, uh, this replay will be posted inside the uh, community. So feel free to chime in, ask additional questions, thoughts. The recording, public recording, because we ran this through uh, LinkedIn for the entire time, got a thumbs up. 
All right. That's good to see. Uh, uh, so um, the recording will be posted on uh, LinkedIn. So feel free to comment on that or share thoughts, reach out. And again, if you're interested in learning more about what we are doing in the community, we are offering a 30 day free trial membership. Uh, membership is 50 bucks a month. Uh, cancel anytime. Uh, currently offering a 30 day free trial membership for anyone willing to kick the tires and check it out. Uh, a lot of what it is, is, is what we talked about today. And again, this topic came about because not because right capital came to us and asked, not because a firm, because advisors asked and said, we're considering this, uh, you know, transition and it's so, so valuable to hear from other advisors. So again, Jonathan, Lisa, thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you.